Hey everyone. Good morning. Hello, Good morning. Brandon. Hey, Anna. Haven't seen you in a while, Brandon. <laughs> really? I thought I'm we... kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, I don't even know anymore. It's just like that. Yeah, everyone everywhere. <laughs> I know it's it's our calendars drive our lives, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Yeah, all early, so let's wait a couple of minutes. Hey everyone, just waiting a couple of minutes. Hello, Dan. Radna, how are you? I'm doing great. How about you? I get to hang out with you all. I am in the best place possible. Yeah. Now, this is my, see, this is a, <laughs> this right so here. Crying. This is the happy punum here. This is what we say. Very happy face. That's great. <laughs> the only hard part I have to work with Brandon, but that's okay. Everybody else is good. I know. I'm, I'm right. sorry. <laughs> it's rough. It's rough for me, Rhonda. <laughs> I'm going to take offense to that, even though you probably weren't even me and me. <laughs> no, he's two of us here. I like you know. the uh, it was the lum, not the Mitchell. All right, there we go. Hugs, Brandon. Hugs. <laughs> All right, folks are still joining, so let's wait a couple of minutes. I think we are also expecting Michael. The code with the formal title there. Going by the necklace today. Yeah, I think I logged in with my uh, personal account today instead of my box, but one. I need to probably go change my Google profile stuff on my personal account at some point, but you know how that goes. Been there like that for 10 years, probably going to be there for another 10 years. Yeah, I haven't changed my GitHub photo for like 10 years. <laughs> I should go through that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think we have a good uh, good number of people in right now. Um, just a couple more that are still connecting and audio connected. So let's let's get started. So um, just a just a quick update. Um, I'm gonna put in the link to the document as usual. These are meeting notes. Um, so we. We have a, a couple kind of um, high level things to, to kind of update about. Um, and also I'd like to, before we, we dive into the details um, as well, I'd like to just go around to see if anyone has any specific updates or any interesting uh, pieces of news to share that could be, um, could be important for our group. So, um, couple announcements. So one thing you may have noticed is um, Emily is um, 
and I are kind of swapping spaces a bit uh, in terms of um, uh, participation. So she's stepping back a bit. I'm going to be participating a bit more. Um, so yeah, sorry, Dan, stuck with me. <laughs> um, so that's... Tried to ve every, for everybody, I tried to veto that, but I got overruled everyone. So sorry. That's Brandon Lum, not Mitchell. Okay, just to clarify. Yeah, so yeah, we have to brand in so you know, we, we have to be a bit, it's going to be a bit tricky. <laughs> um, so another thing that we've done, um, so a couple of us offline, we met together um, and talked about just between, you know, um, the PMs and and a couple of folks here, we, we talked about, you know, taking a look at what we had in terms of the user stories, um, kind of drawing from all the different presentations that we've had and start to kind of create an outline for the document. Um, so we're gonna talk a little bit about what we have. So if you scroll down a little bit, you can see some information about what the overall structure of the, the reference architecture paper would look like. And you can already see in like some fields and details. Um, we're gonna go through that in a little bit. Uh, but we spent some time looking at that, trying to create something where we can start working on and developing um, with the hopes to, to, to get something concrete, something that we start moving forward with. And then towards the end, we'll talk about contributing the doc. We'll do some um, interactive brainstorming here, um, how we can contribute to the, to the document and all the aspects. So the idea is, you know, once we have a good foundation, we can start putting the reference architecture together. Um, so before we go ahead, just want to go around. Is uh, any any updates or any um, news that anyone wants to share that's relevant to the supply chain working group? All right. If not, let's go ahead. So I'll share my screen. Um, I'll talk a little bit about this and then uh, I think I wanna um, pass the time over to Michael who's um, with um, designated our chief architect to help <laughs> uh, structure all this together. Um, so what we have here is kind of, we, we took the previous mission and the scope that we had and we kind of brought it forward here again, just a reminder of what the reference architecture is uh, we have this nice picture here that, um, you know, for, it's from the uh, supply chain security white paper uh, that we're going to use in reference as we are starting to build all these things together. Um, so what we have here is um, this is what we we discuss would be the structure of the paper. Uh, we will start with the general guiding principles. Uh, how do we decide? Um, what is the scope of the paper? This is going to be based on you know supply chain white paper. We may also reference. Um, uh, we'll, sorry, did someone say something? No. Okay. So, um, can I have a quick ask before, while we're going through this? Can we um, pause on the editing? Yeah, I'll, I'll pause that. It was an incomplete sentence. So yeah, sorry. It was <laughs> just the supply chain paper is not a guiding principle. So just adding what we discussed there yesterday. Go for yeah. it. I don't mean to distract you. Yeah, it's just my eyes are <laughs> I'm moving and, a lot. And, Triggers and the OCD. <laughs> and one point here, I think like I said, it was taking all the meeting notes and concatting it into actual like tasks. Like that's I think the our major thing yesterday that that um Brandon, uh Michael uh and Andres and myself kind of did was just make this more of a functional like almost summary of what we need to do. So that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so these are kind of, um, you know, not everything here is, is of course, set in stone. We're just trying to, to draw on the ideas. Uh, and obviously, as you can see, some of the details um, are not filled up yet. Right. Um, so initially, the, the first aspect of the paper is to talk about how we are going to scope, um, how we are scoping this paper and reference architecture as well as um, the kind of philosophies that we take for technologies and things like that. So uh, one thing we discussed was um, 
we're drawing the principles from these different frameworks and papers. Um, how we determine scope is based on some of these things, as well as you know, known technology and knowledge gaps. For example, um, you know, if you can't do certain things a day, or if it is not known how to do how to carry out a certain function, let's say for the sake of argument, I'm not saying this is our scope. But Sorry, we had some echo there. Are we okay? Okay, we're back to normal. Oh. Radna, could you mute if possible? Thank you. I am already on test. Hello? Okay, cool. <laughs> um where was I? Right. So um scoping in terms of technology and gaps, we we talked about certain ideas like if something is not um not really achievable today or there's a lack of knowledge in the area for the sake of argument reproducible builds you'll say that you know because um, there are these things which may not be in scope today uh, however we have this section at the bottom uh, that says future considerations and iterations that talks about um, the things that uh, we are going to say for this current reference architecture is our scope why it is our scope but why at the same time we're talking about these because they are important factors that should be considered. Um, and then the final point on the overall so-called guiding principles of the, the, the reference architecture would be um, when we are talking about the different components of the architecture or certain um, actions of how things are processes of the architecture, uh, here are some principles that we follow where, you know, in terms of technology and tooling, you know, we, of course, we favor, you know, CNCF open source generic in that order. Um, and also we have general anti-patterns like, you know, um, patterns and anti-patterns, right? So you should harden things when it's possible. Uh, you should do, immu you should do uh, immutable, immutability as much as you can, things like that. So, so this is going to be kind of like the high level talks about the document. And then we have the overall architecture goals and stories. So this is really how it's, this is going to be the major structure of the reference architecture. So we discussed a few things. Um, the main things were provenance for build architects, things like that. Um, uh, build artifacts, sorry. Provenance for the dependencies as you're ingesting them. Uh, verification of inputs and outputs. So this is as scanning happens, code scanning happens, and all this stuff. Um, securing a built environment. So this really goes into, um, I think, what most people would, would really call the, the secure build. So this is where the attestation of the environments come in to play and things like that. Uh, distribution and storage of artifacts and consumption of artifacts by runtime. So between us, I think we kind of found these categories to kind of represent most of what we are talking about. Um, and I'm going to quickly go through the rest of the structure of the paper, and then I want to hand it over to to, um, to Michael and, and Andrews and Dan to kind of start the brainstorming the discussion of, let's talk about some of these things, uh, whether we should add things in, whether we should... Um, reward them, you know, what are some things that we may be missing. Brandon, real quick, I, I know this is this is an eye chart for people. I'm getting comments and you're going fast. So quick checkpoint, perhaps see if folks have thoughts or feedback or this elicits a response that might things are might not be aligned with what you had anticipated or how we had been moving before you go on. We're generally opening up the floor for folks to comment at this point. Um, I know you're just seeing the document right now, but let's just open it up for discussion. Yep. I just wanted to quickly um, say one thing, just to because I know some folks were were using the um, Trello board, and I think we still do plan to, to to use the Trello board. 
but I think um, there was some worry uh, that we were sort of putting the cart in front of the horse there where we were sort of splitting up bodies of work without really understanding the big picture of what we were trying to achieve. And so that's what this is for is to help us better sort of understand, you know, what are the high level boxes? What are the high level components that we assume will be part of a software factory? And from there, it will help, I think, better inform um, what we are doing in the Trello board and also help us prioritize what we plan to work on. Hey, um, can you hear me? Yes, yep. I do. Yeah, yeah, cool, thanks. I'm just sorry, as a complete newcomer to this group, I think this is my second uh, meeting. Um, yeah, I, I landed on the Trello board and I wasn't entirely sure where to start. And I think if we'd linked maybe to this, to this um, overall plan that sort of, as you were saying, tries to give the big picture of what we're trying to achieve, that would, that would really put things in perspective and be really helpful. Cool. Yeah, that, that, that's definitely the goal of why we're writing this up now is I, th I think we, we, we maybe <laughs> went a, too, a bit too quickly into sort of splitting up stuff into stories about even thinking necessarily about epics or the, the, the big picture there. And Michael, um, um, I'm in agreement there, but I, I feel the reference architecture is much more detailed, right? So we'll, for this diagram up there, it shows the overall CACD pipeline, but all the controls, et cetera, that we need to build around that. I think we'll have a follow-up diagram which lays out all the security controls and other controls that we need to lay on top of it. Like I, I think it was, I think it was more like a, it's almost like a win, uh, uh, an overview kind of slot, um, uh, graphic or illustration, right? Of course, that that's not that's the in, in reference architecture. I totally agree. Like the idea here is that once we do figure out like which, which components we're going to actually use, and, and Brent, if you can scroll down to the bottom, uh, I kind of put a, I, I, I'm 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 kind of skipping around, but if you see here, right, the diagram will be based on some of these things, right? So we have this requirement, and this is whatever tools we do here. And the one thing we want to make sure is that we're agnostic, right? So meaning we still have to, any reference architecture has to have some type of suggested opponent, component, but we also want to be able to have an alternate component if like, let's just say something is you know specific to a specific technology that a legacy technology can adhere to, right? And so I completely, completely agree with you. That top one was more like window dressing to say, look, this is the over overview. And then when we get into the meat, we'll have a really uh, detailed uh, diagram. Does that make sense? It does. Um, and and I, I feel we should focus on capabilities rather than products. And, you know, let's not name vendor products. So let's just talk about uh, we have, we, we have to talk. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know. Let me finish your thought there. No worries. No, I, I'm done. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Yeah, we have, but the things were reference architecture, we can't talk in conjecture of what, a, a, you know, in terms of what a, 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 we need to be very specific on a reference architecture. This isn't like a best practices doc, we've already written that for security. We have to be specific on which either projects or uh, products we're going to be using here. But that's why I added that column for alternative, right? So then if we are specific here and we know of a solution that also does similar functionality, then we, that, you know, maybe somebody can do an iteration of it and create another diagram and another, you know, uh, addendum to the document, if that makes sense. So, so Dan, are you saying that we'll take CNCF projects um, and products that are part of the landscape and map them here um, based on the capabilities we need in this reference architecture? I, I, ideally, yes. And then we'll also provide an alternate because again, like there might be some solutions that are very specific to cloud native that do not work in, um, you know, that don't work from a legacy perspective. Um, that was, I think, a concern that like Andres had had as well. I don't know if you want to add more context to that. Sorry to put you more on the context. spot, Andres. I, I just reworded the, the language around the notes of, of CF, CNCF where applicable is, is the preference. Now, we're, we're writing this at this point in time, and, and a lot of it is, is temporal, like software changes fast. A lot of people are working on very interesting things. We're going to try to strive to say, here is the, the best reference that, that captures or performs this, uh, but that might change, right? Um, the picture, though, could have several interpretations. You could say, oh, that's the, that, those are the system internals of, of a monolith that does this. We don't want this, right? Uh, one of the goals here is 
here is not not to be something subjective for someone in any of our respective organizations to hit us up and say, hey, I, I implemented your zero trust supply chain. Come have a look. And you take a peek is like, no, you did it. This looks nothing like it. Uh, this doesn't follow. This is actually not secure. There's a lot of liability here. I don't know. Like we run what's we implemented what's in your in your architecture. So while well, we're not in in the role of compliance or, or conformance uh, for an architecture that doesn't exist yet, we, we should try to make it very clear and very discreet and, and well understood. And in some areas, there's going to be explicit gaps and say, hey, we we are, this is how, this is like the desired end state. There is not a particular tool that performs this today, that it's available upstream, but it's it's what we're trying to fill in. So we might have to declare those. John Shell, you have your hand up. Yeah, I don't mean to interrupt the conversation if there's anything else on that thread. No, go for it. All right. Please, so, please interrupt. That's what the meetings are for. <laughs> so uh, like generally I'm a huge fan of coupling some of this more closely with the, the, the coupling the reference architecture with the best practices paper because I think we we definitely exploded the, the scope uh, in, in some of our early conversations. Uh, I, I went through the paper myself a couple of weeks back again and I realized how much there was as far as recommendations that's not actually software. Um, and, and so there's the kind of a couple of things in terms of like as we get to the point to the reference architecture, maybe some questions that come out of this is like how to best capture or point back to the policy recommendations or the organizational recommendations of what we think the requirements are and not to kind of like as Andres was saying of like, we don't want to be in a situation where someone takes the reference architecture, tries to deploy it and say, now we're secure without doing all of the other stuff. Um, but I think that that's also maybe just to level set on the, the question, I heard reference architecture paper before we talked about like a GitHub repo and things like that. Of like, are we, do we still want to actually build something that connects some of these tools together, or are we going to just make multiple um, recommendations on specific tools or, or components? I think some of what you're talking about, right, is we talked about policy in that paper uh, about what we need on. What, what needs to be implemented, right? And that might look at uh, some of your controls like FISMA or if you're, a, a, you know, any of your federal fed ramp or whatever, right? Maybe we can implement that as policy, as code in this reference architecture where possible, or say that, hey, this, this item would be an administrative policy that needs to be checked out of band. So I think we can make those distinctions on, on it, right? And I think there's a lot of things right now that happen in industry that could be implemented as policy as code uh, using some CNCF tooling that, that, that just isn't yet. Yeah, and to that comment, uh, we are still planning to have an implementation. Um, we just understand and we, we think it's, it's gonna be easier um, if we kind of develop this, um, that we can go, go to folks from different projects and be like, we're building this common bot and it's going to be a much easier conversation. Yeah. Yeah. And, and along those, those lines, I think the thing that we're trying to do is also figure out the prioritization of what best practices to look at first and, and what capabilities to look at first. Um, Cause it, otherwise I think it's, it's very easy, especially for um, you know, some folks on the call have, have, you know, expressed where like, hey, I don't know where to start. Um, and, and I think it's going to be useful to, to provide um, some of that guideline so that we, we know, you know, what sorts of things to, to work on first. Otherwise, you know, we'll, we can, there's lots of rabbit holes we can dive into. So do uh, we, we want to do everything, but let's see how far we get. Let's start with, let's, let's walk before we run. Yeah, one comment uh, to follow up uh, and just say, right? Like, uh, if someone says, oh, we are following these best practices and we are following this supply chain security, and is there a way we can basically provide them the validation? No, you are not, or yes, you are, right? Like a certificate. That, that's going to be very difficult. I see that being very, because if one component is off, it's going to throw a failure, and they're like, this doesn't work. What's wrong? 
Uh, right, right. So people need probably need that assurance, right? Like, are you following the uh, this all the practices, or probably you are missing one of the recommendations, one of the uh, things like signing. You are missing signing in the whole uh, pipeline, right? So people can get I, that. I, I think it would be great if we have a reference example uh -huh. that we can show people how it can be done, and they can go ahead and either apply our recommendations or look at comparable products that they are in their organization or in their group. Yeah, she, she was already planning for the next thing we're going to work on after the reference architect. <laughs> Andrew, <laughs> that's, work that's a great point. Chain certification. One, one, one clarifying question there. How do you think around, oh, something I said on the call yesterday is like, if, if someone places like regular traditional ancient infrastructure, say like a Jenkins, very large install of Jenkins they've had in place uh, for a decade. And they're, they're gonna say, well, we're, we're gonna try to like retrofit this and then call it a day and saying this, this is now like zero trust or like it's, it's conformant with a number of these things. Like, do we wanna make a gradient and say, hey, you're, you're either, you're either doing the thing or you're not, or do we want to say, hey, this is modular. You can progressively adopt parts. Uh, it is intended to be modular and ex extensible, but perhaps there's there's a progression to get there. And I don't know, maybe we can take a page from Kubernetes because like five years ago, if you, if you came into an enterprise and say, oh, you want to modernize your infrastructure, you just have to do Kubernetes. And they would have said like, no. Talk it, to me about the value prop and the benefits, and like how do I get there? But how do you it, think about that? Yeah, it's, so, going to be a, it's going to be a crawl, walk, run for a lot of organizations. If you make it modular, you at least have them show value slowly. So I'm getting close to zero trust. I'm implementing patterns versus I have zero or nothing or everything. So it, it has to be modular. Okay. I, I love that framing. That's useful. Sorry for the noise. Um, yeah, I would tend to agree. I think there's only there can be a value in being like all or nothing. It's the value of example. Um, you can by showing something that's fully done and fully complete, you can say this is what it looks like when it's fully implemented. Anything less than this won't give you the maximum security you can hope for. That's really that's that's the only value I can see in that. But most of the time, I think walk you know crawl walk run makes more sense for organizations when they try to actually implement stuff, not just look at you know perfect examples. It's so just that, like it's just like Kubernetes in general. Like moving applications, you're not going to move your whole stack over. You take little bite-sized chunks. I think we need to take the same idea here. Um, yeah. And as so for that first app, after after you've tackled that big rock, it it just becomes so much easier. Exactly. Brandon, back to you. I think we're. we're I, I think I think Nicholas had something to say. Go ahead, Nicholas. <laughs> yeah, um, I, well, it begs the question then, what does that look like? Where do you start? Um, right, and I see this comment about the SLSA. I think that, that's a good kind of document that's already out there that we can take a look at um, and, and see how, how they did it and what's, what their different levels are and how that maps to the cloud native landscape and see if it fits. Um, salsa? Okay. Like some chips and salsa? Yeah, as, as a Colombian, I, I feel there's cultural appropriation there, but you know, it is the number person, one condiment. Take that up with you. It replaced ketchup as the number one condiment in the world. I got that from really? a Seinfeld episode. Yeah, maybe it's changed. Go ahead. Sorry. So, so yeah, I, I think it. It, you, you know that that uh, what is it called? Uh, the maturity. You know, we use it like a maturity matrix a lot. You see that a lot. So, so what? How does that map to the different tooling that that we already have, and do we have the tooling to to meet that maturity matrix that we come up with? Open question. Let's capture it, Dan. Any any other questions before we we run down through the rest of the dock here okay. so far. I'm sure that more questions will come. Yeah, so I, I think uh, one of the things that we wanted to go through um, at least is talk a little bit more about uh, where we're hoping to see participation and uh, now that the, the outline is starting to, to form up a little bit more. 
Um, so we have a section called components of the supply chain or secure software factory. And then we have also um, defining the actions of supply chain or uh, secure software factory. And the idea is, I think the starting point that we want to work with is to start with defining the components and the actions. And you know, it should follow uh, directly from these two, uh, these two aspects that the architecture is, you know, will be really mainly just piecing them together. Um, another thing that we want to do is, um, I think this has kind kind of come up within the past few uh, discussions here about how we, what we want to target based on the scope of what we are doing. Can we say that? this meets a particular self sub level. I think that is something that we also want to um, create kind of that association with. We say this reference architecture um, is targeting the self sub level. If there are any other standards or any other um, certifications or um, references that we can point to, that will also be good. Yeah, so I think the main thing we are we are hoping for is to to over the next week to build up the components and the actions, as well to get one or two folks to to also look at how we should target our first architecture in relation to with, with all these different standards. Um, I think the way we want to do it is really it's going to be free form initially where everyone just adds in what you think is um, going to be a component of what should be essential actions of the supply chain. And then you know, we'll review all of them, we'll go through them, we'll map them back to um, the overall architectural goals and stories. And that should give us you know, a basic structure. We'll come together, um, we'll put the, a picture together and we'll have a discussion around that. So Brandon, you want us to update in this particular document or on the trailer board? Yeah, I think for now, let's do this document. Okay. Yeah. Um, right now we have it kind of unstructured. If you put something in and you think it maps onto particular stories um, of the supply chain that we're talking about, for example, provenance, verification, you can kind of just put a small bracket by the side. That'll be helpful as well. Um, but yeah, I think, I think this is where we, we hope to get a lot of community feedback on is what you think are essential parts of the supply chain. And then that will build into a reference architecture. Um, Dan, Andrews, Michael, do you want to add on to that? No. Anybody else have any kind of overall thoughts of this? Are we trying to tackle too much here or? Tiago? Hello, sorry. Hello. I left my mic open, sorry. Oh, I thought you had something to say, no, no worries. I'd yeah, be so curious what, what like Marina or Priya would think. I can go. Um, I think honestly, like it, it makes sense to me. I kind of agree with like the major components and kind of like the high level diagram. I think a lot of it corresponds like pretty well to the demo I gave a few weeks ago, which is why like it seems like pretty reasonable to me overall. I think this looks like a great starting place. It has a great list of, of things. And I'm sure we'll think of other things, but yeah, this is a great place to start. Ultimately, we want to kind of put folks' names to this, right? Meaning like to take a look and do the review and make sure that everything is copacetic, not only from the implementation perspective, but also like from the verbiage and all that fun stuff, because this should be a natural, I think John mentioned earlier, should be a natural accompaniment to the document that we have where we're actually, instead of saying, this is what you should do, it's here, we're showing you, this is what you should do. That should be our overarching uh, uh, mission here. We're not just here to talk, we're here to do because if we can't actually implement what we're describing, it's useless. 
I wish I wish you were here every meeting, Andrew. You just literally everything that was in my head, you delivered just said. That's amazing. So preferably, I think we'd like to um, have folks pick up certain contributions to this. Um, I think the most organic organic breakdown of this is based on the overall architecture goals and stories. Um, so the components and actions for each of them. Yeah, uh, I was going to say, uh, I, I think um, one of the things I think that would help myself and, and I hope would help others as well is even just sort of drawing up uh, a diagram, some flows of what this thing should look like, you know, and it can be very high level, not talking about necessarily particular tools at this moment, but just saying, you know, I have some source code, I'm doing some stuff. It goes through a process, describe what that process largely looks like based on a lot of the stuff that we've talked about in the supply chain security white paper. And it should, you know, create this output, that output being something like a, um, an artifact with some level of attestations associated with them and, and um, a level of provenance and, and, and whatnot. And then from there, I think it'll help us dive in a little bit more to figure out, you know, what tools is this are going to work with this? What, what tools will not work with this the way that they're set up now and what sort of work to um, actually start doing? This, this is just me. I don't, I don't think it, it might turn out to be the case, but I have the presumption that there's going to be a split of a lot of folks wanting to jump into like what's going to be the byproduct of, of this supply chain. So we're going to talk about reproducible bills, but should, should the machinery, should the robots that make up the system be reproducible so th there's going to be like a split of dimensions of like yes we're, we're gonna like try to dictate like the architecture by the outputs it, it should produce but there's also a lower dimension of well what are the attributes of the components that make it up should they all all have like commonality of like being the way that we secure these things, we probably don't want to want people like tinkering with a lot of manual configuration and like manual hardening. So what what frameworks can we use to try to make this as intrinsically secure as possible and that security gets declared up front? Question about that. Uh, so are you talking about for the architecture we're describing itself? Like how do we approach um building that architecture in a secure way yes exactly because we're calling this a a secure supply chain right the architecture of a secure some others have called it a secure software factory right like should that factory have uh, a retina scanner on the front door uh should there be like guardrails and fail-safe mechanisms on on the like machinery yeah, so I, I think I think as a as a principle, it's when we're coming up with this high level action flows, we should consider those things. And I think more more is better for now. And then this is something that we can take take a look at together as a group, and then kind of decide um, whether it should be whether it should fit in here. Maybe we can put it into guiding principles and, and somewhere else, right? But I think what interest is important where. Um, I think when we're building these action flows, we should, as much as possible, take into account, um, you know, a high level of, of security. Yeah, like think of it as, as as day zero considerations. Like back in the day, like if if you had conceived this like a decade ago or like two decades ago. You would have come up with a bill of materials of all the hardware to go by and hardware arrives three months from now in the data center and like you're ready to like rack it, stack it, cable it, like all those day zero things. Uh, 
of how to like do we want to make this like here's the architecture for like how how you piece this together and then like the day one and, and day two of it like how do you configure it and fine-tune it and like make sure it it gives you all this like tight artifacts and like has golden images and et cetera et cetera et cetera so so, so how we should about make those I think those should, we should make these kind of concerns items on the doc as of right now, because again, this, this document can probably be 50 pages long, but we need an action and that's create a reference architecture, right? So let's talk today about what it is we need to do. Um, Chief architect, Michael Lieberman, what do you think we need to do here, sir? Um, my, my suggestion, and I think I, I mentioned it a few minutes ago is I would like to just kind of build a diagram with some boxes, right? With, you know, what this flow should generally look like. Cause then I think that helps out with some of those other questions we want to answer. Like, okay, how do we secure those boxes? What should go in those boxes? I think um, those things uh, uh, will be useful. And also how do we prioritize which boxes, you know, need the most work right now and, and, and whatnot. That's fair. I, so, I think a useful way to reason about that, we'll discuss if, if we want to make this like as secure by default up front as, as we can in that blueprint or, or not. Like we, we don't want people to go do this and like get hacked for like having things like wide open. Yeah, so, so I'm thinking that um, just to better illustrate this idea, right? Maybe why don't we... Um, kind of talk about what one, one of these action flows may look like. And then I think if we can get folks to sign up to start developing action flows for particular aspects of the overall architecture and, and, and sorry, I think that will be a uh, good progress for, for the week. Uh, Michael, do, do you have an example of kind of like a flow or maybe we can just start writing one? Um, not one I can share uh, right now, um, <laughs> but uh, uh, hopefully there, there's something I can share um, a little bit in the future that is relatively generic. Uh, but um, I think we can probably just start, you know, getting started there. I think so, there are some good um, things from the supply chain security document that can act as, you know, a, a good sort of baseline for us to sort of, you know, base vocabulary on and, and, and those sorts of things. But it I seems just wanna... like, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, go, go ahead, ahead Go ahead, bud. Oh, the only thing I was just gonna say is that, yeah, I, I definitely think like, you know, I think the things that we have, for example, from a, a components perspective, right? You know, um, that's more or less, you know, what I'm thinking. And, and somebody correct me if they think that may be more of an action flow, sort of like an actual, sort of like a flow of, you know, a, a thing should go here and then here and then here, or more of like a architectural sort of like, you know, I pull artifacts from here and I do these things and, you know, I sign this and then push that to that, you know, to a build system and, you know, whatever. Um, I'm open to either. Uh, personally, I, I think the component one maybe just makes a little bit more sense, but once again, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm open. It seems like we need a POC of some sort using, you know, uh, uh, using the, that diagram as a, as a kind of driver. Michael, am I, am I trying, am I TLDRing that a bit? Um, what, what did that actually stand for? Sorry, I'm not. I'm sorry, uh, like a V1 proof of, proof of concept of some sort, oh, right? Yes. Like, oh, yeah, sorry, yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, no, and, and it could just, once again, be very high level um, like we're not necessarily saying uh, tecton per se, we are saying CICD, right? You know, um, we're not necessarily saying, you know, uh, I don't know, like JFrog Artifactory, we're saying Artifact Repository, whatever, you know, something like like that in, in a document. And then um, I think it'll help us sort of uh, engage on what are the uh, what are the items that actually consist, you know, what, what does a software factory consist of, or what does a secure pl supply chain actually consist of at a high level? And then we can start poking around about like what, you know, what sort of work needs to be done for the arrows, what sorts of component, what sort of actual uh, tools can be used to fill those boxes? Are there any, you know, 
um, known general gaps, like no tool seems to fit this box and we need to write something or we need to think of another way to do it. I think it'll help us answer some of those questions. So coming back, I'm going to quote Andrew, we're here, we're here to work. Uh, so can we have volunteers that want to kind of help fill in the different, um, or give some, like fill in the components and the actions for um, particular sub goals. So for example, provenance, um, verification, things like that. So Brandon, I'll take the verification of inputs and outputs. The action okay. flows for that. You want me to comment there? Okay, thank you. Who's adding stuff to the components now? That sounds like you 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 want to volunteer for one of these things. <laughs> Can we get um other folks that want to chime in this? We have. Hi, Brendan. Sit. Yeah, you type here on it. <laughs> We got the false logins on this one. Okay, thanks everyone for putting in these stuff. Um, do, do you, does anybody think that there there's a need for even the higher level like um, <laughs> uh, just a a uh, like so, some high level boxes like what um, I think it was John posted in in Slack there. Uh, maybe one level below that of just saying, you know, a secure um, architecture for this thing is going to require source, co source code control. It's going to require an artifact repository. Um, and then we can dive in. It's going to require a artifact repository with these sorts of characteristics that are, I think, more of that level down flow of, you know, from a distribution and storage of artifacts perspective and, and so on, but even just kind of highlighting some of those boxes. And it's probably going to look very, um, very generic, just like you have some source code control, you know, you, you pull that down, you, um, uh, you know, you run it through some CICD, you store the artifact in an artifact repository and so on. And then the level down is, hey, yeah, the artifacts are getting signed. The artifacts are going through these processes. Um, because I, I do wonder, just looking at this, um, and, and somebody correct me uh, if they think I'm, I'm off base here, is I, I just do worry that, that some, there's some overlap between these pieces. Um, and uh, it, it, there's the potential for um, people to clobber uh, other people's ideas, especially when they, they're, they're overlapping without sort of considering how it fits in the bigger picture? I agree, Michael. I think the base of blocking blocks have to be defined and then we can map the flows to those blocks. Yeah, I think okay. we have to reiterate these blocks and processes every week. And, and again, make sure that folks are chiming in. This is not like, it's also been a asynchronous doc that you can you know update as, as the time goes as well. Um, and just I, I, what I hate to see is only like Michael working on aspects of this, right? We'd love to see some, some input. So if you're not, if, if you're not comfortable kind of chiming in here, just make sure that maybe either in the Slack channel or in the docs, say, yeah, I'll own this. There's this a, a, this is a working group. What Michael uh, said, I, I wouldn't be too worried about duplication uh, if it risks, oh, I don't want to step on, on somebody else's toes or what I do might duplicate what somebody else is working on. If 
duplication occurs or there's some overlap, we can we can like massage that a bit or we can we can trim it down. But if you have thoughts and ideas, just like dump those and, and we can like structure those as, as we go and trim those things. But I think it's good that we that we get a, a good initial dump. Yep. Also, for, for the folks that are on the call, I think we the majority have been pretty regular on on this call. If if folks are comfortable, I'd rather just do like roll call and say, hey, Brandon Lum, what do you want to work on? Rather than, hey, volunteer yourself or something. If, if we go one by one and say, hey, what would you like to do, if anything? This is a proposal. That's why we have quite a, we have most of the, the categories for that. I see some that have multiple. I think that's fine. Um, I think you can have a discussion within yourselves whether you want to figure out how to split things or, you know, I think if you have an offline discussion to figure out whether you can agree on some split of the different components or different types of actions, or if you want to get together and work on it, that's also fine. Or if you want to work on it separately and bring two different versions, that's fine as well. Yeah. Just make sure everyone gets gets everything. Uh, I'll go through names as I see them on on my screen. John, I see your name is down there already. Shrupad, sounds like you picked something as well. Uh, Priya, uh, your name is there. Is there something else you wanna you wanna take on? Um, I'm good with that. And I did. I don't know if Michael wants any help with kind of creating his high level diagram, but if he does. I'd be open to volunteering on that as well. Amazing. Love it. Go for it. Uh, Axel, what do you want to work on, man? Um, yeah, um, I'm happy to try and help on the on the provenance part, the sort of S-bomb build steps. OK, perfect. Uh, Michael Lieberman, our chief architect, I think you're going to be providing oversight across the board. Yep. And um, I, I'm also, as far as like specific stuff, I've done a lot of work with. Um, I have done a lot of work with securing build environments themselves. So I'm also comfortable with taking a little bit more of a deeper dive there. But uh, if somebody else wanted to take that one, I, I'd definitely be willing to sort of, you know, somebody else can take it. Fantastic. Brandon Mitchell, what do you want to work on? Stuff that I want to work on is... Um not finished yet and so it's like the container image signing and the artifact stuff there's still notary v2 is still in work artifact spec and oci is still in work so i'm not sure how that's going to apply to us since it's still being developed on the other side gotcha yeah that's but, that's a good but, one to think through yeah but on the good news michael knows where to find me so i'm going to be involved in doing stuff behind the scenes no matter what yeah Things, things there are, are super fluid. I've been trying to keep my finger on the pulse. Uh, would be good if we like could even if if you, you're up and close to it, if you could write some language around of like, hey, this is rapidly evolving. Uh, keep an eye on like this three things or like this three repositories. If if you provide like an explanation of, of the direction things are heading, I think it will help shape shape this up nicely. Like what what special considerations to pay to pay to whatever end end up become ends up becoming uh the signing and verification spec or standard and implementation sure. to go with it. Yeah, awesome. I can do that. Marina, I see I see your name on action flows components. Um what else do you want to work on? I was thinking that like the distribution um, piece. So software distribution kind of, yeah, but um, from, from signing to all of that piece, which I think is falls under that piece there. So. Okay. So I have a small request here. I, I know that so the, on the consumption artifacts by runtime, I know that in total kind of has a pretty unique view on this as well as it has a kind of mature um, thought about this as well. So I'm wondering if either uh, would you or anyone that you know on your team um, 
would yeah, like is, to contribute to is this. Is here here? Um, he might be good at that, or I'm also happy to take it. So uh, either way. I'm here. I'm also oh, happy to do it. I don't want to volunteer you. But. <laughs> I actually signed up for the prominence of build artifacts and verifying inputs and outputs stuff, but I think that also comes into play. So, uh, yeah. You're, you're getting well and told. Any chance you can, you can give it like a once or twice over beyond the verification sure. of inputs and outputs? Sure, sure, sure. Awesome. Yeah, maybe give it a review. Sweet. Thanks, Marina. Uh, Klaus Amar, nice to see you here. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the invite. So I'm, this is the first meeting, so I'm still trying to wrap my mind around this. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe next time I see what's going on and I see what I can contribute. Does that make sense? And, and you had reached out inquiring around uh, introducing Spire attestations. Right, right. So we are evaluating and looking at um, building in workload attestation that actually uh, validates and verifies the outcome of the signing and all the build process and how to integrate that with the runtime uh, attestation process for, for workload whenever they are fetching an SVID. So that's what we are looking for. Okay, thank you. I like that. Perfect. Uh, someone just wiped it off. Uh, yeah, no, I moved it down. I moved it down because it's, yeah, it's a component. Okay, and, and I'm happy to, to work with, uh, probably Cole Kennedy would be, would be a great person. Uh, and I'm happy to, to jump in there with you as well and help explore that. Perfect, thank you. Awesome. And, and, and uh, Andres, anything in this document that says runtime, I'm literally tagging myself. So I'll handle anything that's runtime. Yes, let's do it. So Andres, um, can you shepherd that um, or at least like um, figure out the organization for the storage and distribution since there's a lot of people there? Yeah. Um, and then <clears throat> for the provenance, I think the other one, provenance for build artifacts, I can create a chat with everyone and we can figure out um, how we want to split that as well. We got a, a few more folks, uh, Andrew Block, uh, very acquainted and familiar with your work. Nice to have you here. Uh, you're a superpower. What do you want to work on? I wouldn't mind working on the, the CICD pipeline um, components. It was at the bottom of the defined section. I'm not on the dock. It's further down, I thought. CICD pipeline security. OK. You got but it. I can, I, but I can certainly provide input anywhere. But that's kind of an area that I would, I'd like to work on. Sweet. Well, you you own that part, uh, and feel free to shuffle as as needed. Great. Deep dish pizza for you, for getting that accomplished. <laughs> He's from Chicago, you all. It's a little joke. Everyone smile. There's this thing called um, uh, bar style pizza, which people don't know about. It's thin crust in Chicago. I hear you. Talk to uh, Jim from uh, Cockroach about that. He's he's literally wrote a blog post about it. All right, moving on. Alf Pizza, back to uh, software supply chain. Yeah, Alexander Marshall, another another superpower. You're you're a jack of all trades, and thanks for keeping us in line with the the prior effort and making sure it's coherent with that. Um, what do you want to work on? I see you like as as being able to contribute across the board. Alex, um, sorry, I had to find the mute button. Um, I I uh, I put my name down around the dependencies question, and I'm also happy to help um, with uh, Michael on the sort of high level diagram if he's looking for more help on that. Um, and then I will just kind of jump in as um, as I see places where I think I might be able to contribute. Sweet. Amazing. Gary Yang, hello, buddy. How are you? Uh, good. I have myself um, 
set on distribution and storage. I uh, have limited bandwidth, so I'm hoping to contribute where it makes sense. Cool. Right, we are, we are going to be out of time. Sorry, Andrew. So we may not uh, be able to. We have one last person who is Hector Hernan uh, Fernandez. Okay. Uh, yeah, um, I also have a limited bandwidth, uh, but I would like to help uh, whatever you, you decide or otherwise uh, on uh, verification of inputs and outputs. Um, but yeah, it's the first time joining the meeting. I would be happy to help anyhow. anyhow. Welcome. Yeah. Very happy to have you on board. So just um, wrap us up. Yeah, so quickly, logistically, I think we'll create threads for each of these topics within the main Slack channel. Um, like like um, John said, you know, let's try and keep everything public as possible uh, so others can chime in. Um, let's see where we are next week. If we feel like it's useful to spend the time to just do some work, we can have some breakout sessions for next week's meeting instead. Sound good? Well done, Brandon. Lum, not Mitchell. Well, you did good too as oh, well, Brandon. Everyone's well done. Yeah. All brand is good. Yeah. All brand is a good today. <laughs> <laughs> See y'all. Thank all right, thanks everyone. See ya.